Welcome to CBC Windsor News at 6. I'm Meg Roberts. Thanks so much for spending part of your evening with us tonight. If you're a client with Green Shield seeking benefit coverage, we have some answers on how the ongoing strike might affect you. Plus, the possibility for shared governance over one of Canada's most diverse ecosystems, Ojibwe Park. Memorandum of Understanding signed today. And a smorgasbord for one local beaver is creating some problems for the Port Authority. Around 600 workers at Green Shields here in Windsor remain on the picket line after nearly a month of being on strike. Dale Mulner now on how negotiations are going and how the strike is affecting clients. It's a food pantry that has the community has been dropping things off. The union has set up a mini food bank for the workers on the picket line here on Twin Oaks Drive. The union says many major issues have been resolved at the bargaining table, but they still have no agreement on wages. The, the inflation rate has went up uh, and, you know, we're workers, just like every other worker, we're looking for a significant increase. Uh, we historically have not received, great, you know, huge increases and we recognize that. When it comes to clients getting reimbursed for claims, the company and some people we talk to say there doesn't seem to be a problem. The company says nearly 95% of claims are submitted online and they are being processed normally. They say some things are done through automation. Well, it's definitely not business as usual um, because our, our members aren't doing the work. They're not answering the phones. The call center is not open. Um, what I do know is that we do have people that are not in the non-union um, and management that are doing claims and stuff. When it comes to checks they have to issue, Green Shield says they are processing as many claims as they receive in a given day and most frequent and high volume claims continue to be processed within a week. Here at the Avenue Dental Offices, patients pay for the service and the dental office submits their claims to Green Shield. If they're signed up for direct deposit, then they shouldn't see a problem with getting payment, just like us here in the office. The union says sometimes they help clients in the greatest of need. There have been people reaching out to us about concerns that they have and we have made sure that people that are in need um, are getting to the right people inside to get what they need um, so that nobody's left uh, without very important medication. So somebody to be out maybe $80, that might not be a concern, but if somebody's out 5000 for medical equipment they've had to put out, we've made sure that we've let them know how to do it. We've even had people come by the line to go drop off and realize that we were on strike, but we've helped them fill out their, their form. So it's a testament to the kind of membership that we have. We really do care. Nesbitt says talks between both sides are ongoing. Dale Molnar, CBC News, Windsor. Memorandum of Understanding has been signed between Parks Canada and the Caldwell First Nation. It will explore co-governance and collaboration management for the future Ojibwe Urban National Park in Windsor. So it is a great day and it means a lot to Caldwell First Nation. Uh, we spent two years with Parks Canada talking about what this could look like and Parks Canada was always willing to come to the table and uh, Caldwell was always willing to sit down and, and work on advancing our relationship so that it's very strong so that going forward that there will be uh, a co-governance model or an understanding of how we will conduct business and how, we'll, how we will take care of each other in the lands. We have Parks Canada is committed to working in co-governance arrangements at all of our protected places across the country and we have some really strong examples of that. Some of the northern parks for sure um, as well as Guayanas on the west coast of BC. So that's those are the, um, the models and the experience that we'll be drawing on as we move forward with this national urban park as well. Today's event was held at Point Peely National Park. The agreement says that the government will explore cooperation with Caldwell on things like First Nations-led conservation, building commitments, visitor experience, and wildfire management. According to Parks Canada, the designation of the park is still in the works, making its way through government. Right now, they are in the third step of the process, which includes figuring out the boundaries of the park, land management agreements with the municipalities and province, as well as co-governance. Online buyers and sellers know that meeting up can be the sketchiest part of a deal. That's why Windsor Police are getting ready to launch the city's first safe internet exchange zone. It's a public spot where transactions can happen under police video surveillance. Something uh, nefarious does happen, it's on camera and we will investigate any criminality there, frauds, 
assaults, anything like that. Here's your spot if you want a safe, sp a safe space. It's well lit, it's close to the road, and it's on video. The spot is in the parking lot of the Collision Reporting Center on Jefferson Boulevard. Crowley says the video won't be constantly monitored, but will be reviewed for evidence if any incident is reported. Use of the site is hoped to deter scams and criminals. Windsor Police plan on launching the campaign in early April. Now, it's not a new idea. Their police forces already have these types of spots. Essex County OPP created a space in 2016 and now have safe exchange zones at every detachment in the county. The South Police started a similar zone at their station on Normandy last year. We've gotten a lot of good feedback from the community saying that they use it frequently to uh, do any kind of purchases and exchanges and uh, gives them a, a sense of feeling um, safer that they're on uh, police property. And if you have somebody who is reluctant or does not want to meet at the police station, um, probably good to avoid uh, engaging in that uh, exchange. It, it provides those sellers and buyers a safe place um, as opposed to meeting in a, in a dark parking lot or have some stranger attend your residence or you showing up to someone's residence that you don't know. It makes it for a safer transaction. There's a major buzz around the total eclipse happening on April 8th. The big question is, will we actually be able to see it? Unfortunately, April skies in Canada and particularly those areas along the path of totality tend to experience frequent cloud cover. But that doesn't mean one should lose hope. According to 30-year-old data, there's a 19.7% chance of clear skies in Windsor for the upcoming eclipse. Observers will see the moon entirely cover the sun at about 3 p.m. local time. Our region will be the first to experience the natural phenomenon in mainland Canada. Ontario will unveil its provincial budget tomorrow, and tonight we are learning what may be coming. Tomorrow we will speak with Ontario's finance minister on the show, but first let's head to Queen's Park reporter Lorenda Redekop for a preview. The Premier and the Finance Minister were in Mississauga with a preview of one item that will be in the provincial budget. We're going to extend the gas tax cut through to December 31st, 2024. It's not a surprise. The Finance Minister had hinted that the cut would continue. Doug Ford and his government first added the goodie for drivers in the summer of 2022 and have repeatedly extended it, cutting 5.7 cents a litre off the price of gas. The finance minister described his upcoming budget this way. It's going to help us stay the course while creating stronger communities, not just for today, but for tomorrow as well. The premier also says there won't be any tax increases. We have to continue, continue building the economy. Things are tough out there for people. Really, really tough. Multiple industry sources have also told CBC News the budget will include changes to auto insurance, allowing vehicle owners more freedom to pick and choose their coverage. You won't be surprised. I'm not going to reveal what's in tomorrow's budget. But what I would say is this. You know, there's many components to auto insurance, one, not least of which is auto theft. The huge spike in car thefts is one reason drivers have been seeing their rates go up. Also a big cost for insurers who have to pay to replace the car. Auto theft right now is one of the biggest crises for insurance companies. It is so expensive. It's one of the biggest loss events that insurance companies can have. The finance minister also took part in a pre-budget tradition, shoe shopping. No dress shoes this year. These look great. Good Ontario made in-house brand. He went to a Marks in Pickering, saying he's frequently visiting building sites. These construction boots are going to get used a heck of a lot, so I'm very, very happy. That's the CBC's Lorenda Redekop reporting. Have a listen now to the opposition parties. Housing, housing, housing. We need a government that's going to address the housing affordability crisis because that's what's driving the affordability crisis so many people are facing. In that meaningful investment in public health care, in public education, in real bold housing solutions that are going to deliver a truly affordable, supportive, attainable housing that people really need in this province. The issue of fourplexes once again came up today. All opposition parties see automatic zoning of them as part of the housing plan. The government wants to leave it up to municipalities. The Premier attacking the Liberal leader over the issue. Bonnie Cromie would force people uh, to put up with a four-story tower beside your home. I don't believe in forcing people. Like, just 
like the hyperbole of, oh my God, six, eight stories, the sky is gonna fall. People are gonna lose their minds. There's only one person who's losing their mind right now, and that's Doug Ford. What if we told you there's a place where it's all happening? A place where more people are going to work than ever before. Where the next generation of workers are training for the careers of tomorrow. It's to say how much the ads are costing taxpayers, but through a freedom of information request, CBC Toronto found out the estimated price tag is $8 million. The ads have aired online, on radio, and in prime TV time slots, including the Oscars and the Super Bowl. The campaign's message tells Ontario audiences that they live in a place that's investing in EV battery plants and new highways. Isaac Brogan is just 12 years old, but he is getting some time in the spotlight thanks to his S-P-E-L-L-I-N-G skills. He won the sixth annual regional spelling bee at the Chrysler Theatre yesterday for the second year in a row. It means he will get to move on to the National Spelling Bee, which is in uh, outside of Washington, D.C. in May. Brogan and his mom were in the Windsor Morning Studio today with host Amy Dodge. And last year, the, the winning word was conundrum. What was the word this year? Um, this year, it was netiquette. Is that like internet etiquette? Pretty much, yeah. I'm practically a smeller. How do you spell netiquette? Um, it's spelled N-E-T-I-Q-U-E-T-T-E. -E -T -T -E. A lot of people think that spelling doesn't matter anymore because we have spell check. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't. Okay. Well, spelling still <laughs> does matter is what I mean. How much does it bother you when you read something and there's a misspelled word or something grammatically wrong? It's like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can do better. You can do be Be better. <laughs> One little local beaver is really putting the dam in damage. He's been eating on the trees along the Detroit River. There's, of course, some negative aspects to that, according to Windsor's Harbor Master, but there's some positive points as well. So really what we see is what the last year to two years has been with this one pesky little beaver. It appears to be one family here, but he's been very busy and he's taken some substantial trees down in this area. Over there on the riverbank itself, what's that that we're looking at? So th that's really the, the beaver dam, if you will. It's for more of a den because it's built in a shoreline. So all the limbs, you can see in the bigger trees that are down, they've all been limbed off. So that's the beaver taking the limbs, going to his house. It's a great impact that the beaver is here, but it does have a negative impact on other species that count on these trees for cover, whether it, it be vegetative or uh, the animals that are here. So it's amazing to see a beaver back in this area, but again, considerable amount of damage from the trees. This is a sign that the river is getting cleaner, that these animals are actually surviving. To see the otters back here, it's absolutely amazing. There hadn't been otters seen here in decades. To see these animals come back, that's why it's so important for us to protect this little guy who's tearing up our trees, but we have to protect him because we need these species. This is all, all part of making our river healthier. Hard to believe this morning started out so chilly. We're currently sitting at a balmy 17 degrees. A perfect way to start our week. Your full weather forecast coming up after the break.
Canada's music industry celebrated its biggest and brightest last night at the Juno Awards show. The party in Halifax saw dazzling performances, all-star tributes, and even some biting political commentary. CBC's senior entertainment reporter Eli Glasner has some of the highlights. Sometimes at the Junos, a single artist dominates, but this year in Halifax, they spread the love around with Tate McRae, with Toby, with The Beaches, and Charlotte Cardin, each taking home two Junos each. But the show opened in grand style with the return of our host, Nelly Furtado, singing a collection of her greatest hits from Man Eater to I'm Like a Bird and more. But let's go back to the beaches. They've been having a remarkable time here in Halifax. They went into the show already having won the Rock Album of the Year Award and beat out the Arkells and Nickelback to take home Group of the Year. An amazing accomplishment for this band from Toronto who had a message for their fans. To all the young girls watching, go start bands with your best friends. Thank you. The show in Halifax was the place for some powerful performances, particularly this tribute to Robbie Robertson. Get your cannonball now to take me down the line. And it was a place for some powerful statements. Tegan and Sarah were honored for their work with LGBTQ youths, and they used their time accepting the humanitarian award to call out the Alberta government with some strong words. And we are dedicated to confronting any form of discrimination that threatens the well-being of our community. <laughs> Threats like the Alberta government's attempt to prevent trans youth from accessing vital care. The show was also a reminder of the expansive variety of the Canadian music scene from Ottawa's talk, Breakthrough Artist of the Year, belting out his song on the Juno stage. To Maestro Fresh West entering the Canadian Music Hall of Fame in style and making history as the first rapper to be inducted. Next year, the party moves to Vancouver. Eli Glaster, CBC News, Halifax. Vic DiPaolo is here now with our weather forecast. Well, Meg, how about it? A beautiful day today in Windsor. Double digits, summer-esque type weather. I know I cannot wait to get my tennis racket out if this continues for a consistent five days. Now, one good thing about the Windsor area is when it comes to winter tires, having a lot of conversations with people over the weekend because I know the GTA received some snow. Areas such as Ottawa where have some family received some snow and they're wondering when's a good time to take off those winter tires. Well, when the temperatures remain consistently above seven degrees, it is always a good time to remove those winter tires. And the great news about the Windsor area it has been a beautiful area to be with temperatures staying consistently close to above seven. Now here's what it looks like when it comes to a headlines. We're expecting a wet morning. That rain is going to start around four or five o'clock. We're expecting thunder showers as well for your Tuesday, but not a big amount and not for long either. Now we are also expecting seasonal temperatures to return in the wake of all of that rain. Now we know today we had a high close to about 15 degrees and the low was minus one and compared to our average temperatures where 8.4 is your average high and minus 0.8 is your average low. We're smack dab right there for your average low, but for that high, Windsor was treated with some beautiful weather. Now here's what's happening when we're looking at our region and it comes to the overnight temperatures. Well, Windsor is going to be 9 degrees. We see Sarnia will be 9, London 8 degrees, Chatham Kent 9 degrees as well. So the big consistent theme here, it is going to be a pretty warm and mild night tonight. Great night. Now here's what's happening when it comes to rainfall totals and how much rain will be falling over the Windsor area between now and let's say Wednesday morning. Well, as we do see here, we're going to be expecting closer to maybe 10, 15 millimeters by the time it's 10 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. And a quick weather outlook to show us exactly what else is happening outside of the rain. Well, we can see the increased cloud cover when it comes to your overnight tonight. And a lot of that rain will be starting as we do start our day tomorrow. And as we get later on and towards Wednesday, the good news is it does ease up, but you see we still are anticipating a little bit more as 
as it comes to your overnight for Wednesday. Now looking at our three and five day forecast, how about that weather when it comes to tomorrow? 13 degrees coupled by a beautiful day today, but then we talk about the return of seasonal temperatures, but hey, can't have it all, but I'd love a great start to a week. Hope you all have a great night. Over to you, Meg. Thanks so much for that, Victor. An important Easter food has majorly gone up in price. We tell you what that is coming up. So far, seven people have appeared in court in connection with the deadly attack on a Moscow concert hall last week. While a faction of ISIS, the Islamic State group, has claimed responsibility, Russian President Vladimir Putin is trying to cast suspicion on Ukraine and the West. CBC's Briar Stewart has the latest. The faces of the four alleged gunmen tell the story of their arrest and what happened afterwards. They appeared in court bruised beaten and barely conscious. Late Monday, three others also appeared accused of being complicit in the attack on a Moscow concert hall that left more than 130 dead. For the first time, Russia's president described the attackers as radical Islamists, but suggested Ukraine and the West could also have been involved. This atrocity may be just a link in a whole series of attempts 
by those who've been at war with our country since 2014, he said. The group ISIS-K, an offshoot of Islamic State, has claimed responsibility. It carried out a suicide bombing at the Kabul airport in 2021 and recently staged attacks in Iran and Turkey. Germany says it stopped the group from targeting a cathedral on New Year's Eve, and France's president said police there had also foiled planned attacks. We have offered to increase cooperation with Russia's intelligence services and our partners in the region, said Emmanuel Macron. France raised its terror threat to the highest level, and Italy has stepped up security ahead of Easter. So we are seeing an upscaling by ISIS operations. This international terrorism expert says Russia is a target of jihadi groups in part because it fought in Syria alongside the government against ISIS. With the expansion of uh, ISIS-K, they have been increasingly trying to tap into communities in Central Asia, but also Central Asian communities in Russia. And the way they go about doing it is predominantly online, through encrypted messaging apps. The suspected gunmen are all from Tajikistan. Russia has said they were arrested while on their way to Ukraine. Ukraine and the U.S. have dismissed those claims as propaganda. Briar Stewart, CBC News, London. Donald Trump was due to pay a $464 million bond today in the civil fraud judgment against him. But a New York appeals court has lowered the amount significantly to $175 million. And the former U.S. president has been given 10 more days to get the money. I post either $175 million in cash or bonds or security or whatever is necessary uh, very quickly within the 10 days. But Judge Andorra is a disgrace to this country. If he meets the new deadline, the state will not seize his assets while he appeals the judgment. A judge found Trump and his co-defendants fraudulently inflated the value of his assets. Meanwhile, a New York judge has set April 15th as the trial date for Trump's hush money case. He's charged with falsifying business records to hide payments made to an adult film star to cover up an alleged affair. As we head toward the Easter holiday, a traditional treat is getting a lot more expensive. The price of chocolate is rising because of a global shortage of its key ingredient, cocoa. Bad weather and plant disease have reduced cocoa production, mainly in West Africa. Production has fallen by almost a third in Ivory Coast, which grows about 40% of the world's cocoa. The product has more than doubled in the last year, hitting a record high that topped $12,000 per metric ton today. Another key ingredient in chocolate, sugar, has been significant, has seen significant price increases over the past three years. Well, that's it for CBC Windsor News. Don't forget for news anytime, you can go to our website at cbc.ca slash Windsor. You can also download the CBC News app for stories that matter most to you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Looking forward to seeing you back here tomorrow night.